that's a beautiful piece of art that you're in front of. Thank you. I got it for $100 at a flea market like 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Good for you. It is a, it's Thank a, you. is it a painting or a photograph or what is it? It's a, it's a painting. It's like a two panel, um, like huge scene, but I feel like I should have dressed more like someone who lives in this field of dreams. Yeah, you should have a hat and a basket, <laughs> like, right? Yeah, yeah. You look lovely. Um, hey, you grew up on the East Coast mostly, but then I just learned this morning in a meeting that you lived on a houseboat. How am I just learning this? <laughs> I don't know, Ellen. We, we, have, we have to keep mining for, for new things to talk about because I, you were so kind to have me on. I, you know, it was the 70s. My dad was just like, you know, feeling his way through life. And every time I ask him about it, he's like, yeah, everyone was living on a commune. I mean, it was sort of a, it was like a, we, we dropped out, I guess, for a little while and, you know, lived on a houseboat. I got picked up for nursery school in a, uh, a speedboat, <laughs> as you do. That's fantastic. How long did you live on a houseboat? Not for very long. We were in the Virgin Islands and, um, yeah, for maybe not even quite a year. I do remember feeling seasick <laughs> some <laughs> of the time. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, we had a lot of cool experiences. We kind of moved around for a while there. Yeah, that would be quite an experience to get picked up in a speedboat to go to yeah. nursery school. Wow, that's, that's yeah. anyway, but not if you're seasick. Um, <laughs> how's your little puppy? You, you adopted a dog the last time you were here. Well, it was quite a saga. I um, adopted a beautiful puppy and who turned out to have a lot of medical issues. Oh, bless her. And um, needed a, quite a few surgeries. And she started working with this very wonderful uh, lady, rehab lady named Anita outside of Vancouver. And she required a lot of um, massage and therapy. And so she stayed with her uh, while I was working. And um, over time, it became clear that not only was she very happy on this farm uh, with Anita, but she fell in love with another woman. <laughs> and I... A woman, I, a dog or a woman? A dog woman. A dog woman. woman. was a dog. The, the woman was and, a dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, a dog, a dog, a dog. Okay. And I mean, to the degree that she would come back to me on the weekends and cry. Like she was so miss, she became best, yeah. So her girl, her friend is the, uh, not the middle, but but the uh, Loki on the end. And they just really became companions and partners. And, um, and, and so she uh, was better off there uh, in addition to living with Anita who could just take better care of her needs. So it worked out great, but wow, it was, um, it was quite quite a year, but so, so she's a happy ending. She, your dog is a lesbian living on a farm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, aren't are the, are the best dogs that <laughs> doing yeah. that? Yeah. And the best lesbians. We all that's right. We that's we right. all want to live on a farm. All of us. <laughs> and we all cry when we're being taken away from our our companions on a farm. Our partners. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, well, exactly. And speak, no, speaking of partners, how's, how's Peter doing? Is, uh, it, 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 a lot of people during this time, it either enhances their relationship or it, it splits them up. What's happening? Well, our unique situation was uh, because the Mighty Duck shot in Vancouver that, uh, and because of quarantine, I couldn't come and go. Um, normally, that's a two-hour flight. Oh, you come home on the weekends, but I couldn't do that. So we were separated for almost five months. Wow. Um, which had never happened before. So when I came home, <laughs> the house was a little different. Um, there were more piles, I would say. Um, and he and his son had really bonded, which was fantastic. But I, I, I think the re-entry was more difficult. Like, it was more like they were the married couple and I was the person who was like, they were like, we don't do it that way anymore. Like, <laughs> in the kitchen or whatever, they were like, they were like, no, 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 this is how things happen. And Peter started a thing, I guess, just to make life, COVID life fun, where he'd go to the store and stock up on ridiculous amounts of whatever and leave it in the corner of the living room. And then he'd call it, 
COVID corner, as if that somehow made these piles of stuff fun or like a place to visit or like a place to show the guests. You know, nobody's coming over, but he'd be like, hey guys, have you seen COVID corner? <laughs> it's, like not, it's not like an amusement park. It's not like a thing to, so, but I felt like I had to respect COVID corner and allow it to exist, you know, because these times are tough and everyone just de dealt with it their own way. So if you need club soda or paper towels, come on over to COVID Corner. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm good. Thanks. Thanks a whole lot. <laughs> that is a clip from her new show. It's called The Mighty Ducks Game Changers. Everyone's loving it. Tell everybody about the show. So it picks up after whatever the last Mighty Ducks um, installment was. And the um, sort of difference here is sports. It, it sort of asks, where did the fun go? And the Mighty Ducks have become this very moneyed, um, a successful team. And all the parents are really competitive and scary. And my kid gets cut for a very small mistake. And so we decide we're going to start our own team. and. Um, eventually, we come upon the, the legendary Gordon Bombay, and, uh, and together we start a new team. And you're so obviously you you skated before that you got this, so you spent a lot of time on the ice. Are you a good skater? <laughs> Ellen, I'm an actress. I act <laughs> things, and so there might be some movie magic in there. I don't know, but. Um, I don't know. You're it saying, was really fun anyway. So you're saying it may not all be you. <laughs> you know, Ellen, <laughs> this is why do we ruin things for people? This is like <laughs> like I, when I see the Downton Abbey cast like in like a smoky eye, I just like I, it makes me so upset. I don't want to know. I don't understand why, <laughs> why people <laughs> want to know like was it really you? I'm like, yeah, let's let's say it was. They're not, say it was. they're not supposed to put a smoky <laughs> eye on because it changes. No. Oh my god. I don't want to see Mrs. Pat Moore in like a low cut gown. Like, no, I don't know. Let, let me have my fantasy. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, so you're working on a book of new essays. Tell everybody what chapter uh, the the 90s chapter is going to be called. <laughs> so um, there's a chapter in a book of essays uh, about the year I moved from New York to LA. I think it's one of my father's good, in particular going to be really proud of. It's called Boobs of the 90s. And I it's about um it's about how when I moved to LA suddenly everybody had these giant boobs and I was like I didn't understand if they like, what the deal was and and then I I I had to get a one, you know, I, you had a wonder bra, and suddenly I realized that like my boobs were out of date, and I had to up, like you have to update your boobs, you have to keep them fresh, you have to keep them current, you know, with the with the times, <laughs> and so I got like a wonder bra, and I got you know chicken cutlets and all that stuff, and then I was sitting with May Whitman, my dear friend, a little while ago, and she was like, oh, I need like a different bra for work, and I was like, no, you just need a bra, like what is that thing you're wearing? She's like, this is my bra. And I was like, no, you're like, that's like a tissue paper with like a piece of twine. And she was like, Lauren, no one wears all that junk anymore. And I was like, darn it, it's happened again. My boobs are outdated. I've let my boobs in the last decade. Oh. And so you have to keep your boobs, you know, uh, uh, current. Yeah. Is what that essay yeah. is about. So, certainly not the boobs necessarily, but the, but the undergarments. You have to keep those current. I, don't, I think your boobs don't really, well, they do change, but you can't really. They do change. Yes, they do.